morning, or it could be good afternoon. It could be good evening, or from my fellow insomniac friends, hello in the middle of the night. My name is Hardeep Senkoli. You may know me from work such as the guy that held the door open for you on the train, the man that drinks double macchiatos at Chilenos in Glasgow, or the guy that off the radio and the telly and um, stand-up comedy and the like. But if you're here, you're here because you are a, a lover of food. And this podcast is to introduce you to the new manifestation of myself online, on the interweb, I believe they call it. Uh, I will be doing a whole load of new things and I just wanted to sort you through them because I am beyond excited. Um, I'm here with my producer stroke friend. So Nathan and I are venturing out into this world, very excited about it. I'll tell you... (laughs) So, um, I'm going to tell you this. This wasn't meant to be in the intro podcast, right? But I'm going to tell you anyway because it's funny as... I have been on um, a diet, as many of you that watch my Facebook Lives and the rest of it know, I've been trying to lose weight, get back into shape. Ergo, bread is my kryptonite. I could eat bread all day long. When you say get a loaf of bread, I think eat a loaf of bread. That's what I think. You know, Marie Antoinette, one of my heroes. Let them eat brioche. I'll eat all the brioche, Marie. Denny, you fash, my pal. So I try not to have bread in the flat, and my pal Heather has taken to like we would have like a, a soupy kind of stew one evening, and there'd be half a crusty loaf or crusty loaf, as the lovely Kathleen calls it. We'd have half of that left. Heather and I'm sorry, I don't do this. Heather would put it straight into the bin to stop us eating it, because she too likes to you know be aware of uh, calorie content and carbohydrates. So. Bread coming into my house. Now, you need to understand, I'm a Glaswegian of Punjabi heritage. Bread is is up there with, you know, quite soon after walls and a roof in my life, right? So to be excited about bread coming into the flat is a bizarre phenomenon, yet absolutely the most natural thing in the world. So me and Nathan are sitting here having had a really productive few days. We've done some recording. We've done some TikToks. We've done a lot of planning. Uh, which makes the recording of the, the intro even more exciting for me because I know what we're doing now and I know what we're offering you and I'm really excited about it. And I'm really excited to start a dialogue with all of you because you've already shown yourselves to be so engaged and so interested in food and in what I'm doing and I'm as engaged and interested in all of you. Um, so I said to I was packing this boy up, Nathan, to get him back across to Edinburgh because he's moving in here. That's how committed we are to this project. He's moving into my flat so we can do this, like, really effectively for all of you and for all of us. So um, I said, should we um, just some lunch? Because we weren't planning on doing it. We were, gonna do, we were meant to do this later on in the week. I said, we just want some lunch before I send you back east. Because they're not that, I'm sorry, but they're not that friendly back east. They might not have given him anything to eat. Even his fridge might have refused to open for him. <laughs> it's an Edinburgh fridge. Um, they've got a castle, though. I don't know if you know that about Edinburgh. They've got a castle. They mention it every now and then. What have they got, Nathan? A castle. A castle. Sweet, dimpled genius that he is now. Oh, squeeze those cheeks. If he'd been in... He's, he, he, oh, he wouldn't have lasted five minutes. Those cheeks would have been squeezed red raw in my eyes. Mm, you little baby, Nathan. Um, so, I said, should we have... Um, and uh, uh, it was a wee special on at the uh, at Morrison's. We get two packets of bacon for the price of one. Now, bacon and eggs for me is a great lunch because it's delicious and I don't feel I'm missing out on anything because it's great. And also means I can go to the gym a bit later on and I've got some protein inside me. Now, Nathan will say, you need some carbohydrate inside you. But that's just something we're going to work out in our beautifully un- unfolding friendship. So I'm not at him. Eh, do you want some bacon and eggs for lunch? And... The thing I love about Nathan is he can't hide how he feels about food. It's an impossibility, right? If he commits food crime, there's no point in him getting a lawyer. Just confess to it. I had the cake, you know? I had all the cookies, right? Whatever it is, you can see it in his eyes. He was not inspired, lovely listener, by bacon and eggs. It was it was half hour after you were nonplussed by it. Bacon, hmm, eggs, hmm, together. Hmm. I'm sure if you cooked them, they would be fabulous. He knows all the right things to say. There are no birds in the trees in Bent Denison this weekend because he's charming them all out. Um, so then I said, do you want a bacon sandwich? Now, bacon sandwich is quite an English thing. 
we don't do bacon sandwiches up here, and that's because I lived in London for 20 years. I kind of still think about a bacon sandwich. And I always think about bread, uh, because if we buy a loaf of bread, there'll be bread left later. <laughs> we can eat him when he's gone. We've <laughs> got terrible slats in the fridge. <laughs> So said, oh, how about rolling bacon? That's what we have in Scotland. There's a big difference between us, right, and the English. So we have a Roland, dot, dot, dot. So we tend not to have sandwiches. Although, and you don't call it a sandwich, you call it a piece. A piece of bacon. But I've never had anyone call it a piece of bacon. You don't have a piece of bacon. You have a piece of cheese. Uh, a jelly piece. A piece of jam. So I'm like, Adam, should we have um, a rolls and bacon? And his sweet eyes, it was like the 4th of July. Fireworks in his eyes. If it weren't already a bright sunny day, I wouldn't need to open curtains. Mostly because I don't have curtains. <laughs> Got blinds. Nothing in the bedroom, so <laughs> whatever. So he runs it in the shop, and I put the bacon. I do the bacon. I do my bacon in the oven now, um, because I can season it before it goes in, and the seasoning cooks into the bacon, which I think makes all the difference, don't you think? Mm. You know, and it was. It was a good bacon to begin with, because I don't believe in scrumping on bacon. Because you know that white scum that comes out of bacon? That ends up boiling your bacon. And if you want boiled bacon, boil bacon. <laughs> so, I mean, be my guest. You know, get in touch with your, your Irish heritage. It's a beautiful dish, boiled bacon and cabbage. You know, with a, a strong bit of champ, maybe. Who knows? But that's not what we were signed up for, for this lunch. Anyway, the long and the short of it. Well, actually, it's my podcast, so the long of it, if you will. Lovely listener. He comes back up. And I think, I don't think we discussed it necessarily, but there's kind of a given that two lads our size are going to have a couple of bacon rolls each. It was going to tacit acceptance thing. The other thing you need to know, which we'll probably talk about in more detail through the next couple of years, the great division between the east and west coast of Scotland isn't the existence of a, a different political state of mind in the west from the east. Um, it isn't a geographical... Uh, Tem- temperature and climate difference between the east and the west uh, it isn't even the fact that they've got a castle and we got the chat the difference is what's the difference Nathan? there's no brown sauce here <laughs> right when he says brown sauce he means sauce of colour um, we don't do they do you do brown sauce in your chips don't you? Oh, so it's, salt but it's salt and sauce. sauce no vinegar well there's vinegar in the sauce I understand that I'm just clarifying it for our listeners <laughs> Jeez, oh. Oh, it's very clearly a very touchy subject. Whereas here, we're salt and vinegar, they're salt and sauce. We have ketchup here. I don't have ever seen brune sauce in a shop. There was scandal, actually. I went to a ch- Do you know what? I'm a 52-year-old man. And I want to tell you this happened when I was in my teenage years because it's so petulant and immature. But the truth is, it happened about three or four years ago. I found a chippy in Glasgow with brown sauce in it. I didn't, didn't go back. They don't belong here. Don't get me wrong. They're, you know, if they come and work hard, that's fine. Just don't expect me to have anything to do with them. Coming over here with their brown sauce. <laughs> so, but also you need to understand that like, this is a chef's house. And Nathan is a very talented cook. And I think that's why he's doing this. And I'm quite blessed to have him involved in this. Because it's a great joy to talk to him about food. Even when we're not recording or filming or writing or whatever. Anyway, um... We're doing. He comes back up the road. Uh, comes back up the stairs with the uh, rolls. Now I'm expecting. Again, this is fascinating. The cultural difference about a bacon roll. So I did a radio full food program about the bacon roll, which I loved, and I think listeners seem to enjoy very much. It's the one that they mentioned the most to me. Um, I'm expecting four morning rolls. Now you need to understand that the Scottish morning roll is it's yeasty and doughy. And it, it, ironically, given our bad dental health in this city, stroke country, they've got a lot of chewing, but they're delicious. And then you've got that kind of the crust on the outside, so that beautiful juxtaposition. Uh, and then you've got a welfare roll, uh, a morning roll, which is looks burnt on the top. And I do love watching English people just panic over whether they're meant to buy. The black and they're black. They're black rolls. They're absolutely delicious. That kind of the bitter carbon working against that kind of soft sweetness of the roll and whatever else you put in it is, I think it's an absolutely fantastic. I mean, listen, I, that's like ask me, ask me what a burnt roll or a morning roll or what iron brew tastes like. It's like ask me what my mother's milk tastes like. I can't even tell you. It's just something I know and I love. Um, I want to make it clear that I've not had my mother's milk for a very long time. We're not that weird. Um, although in parts of five. Um, I said that because he's from five. Nathan. So the boy comes up the stair 
and it's perplexed me because it's two o'clock and you find in Glasgow the rolls are all gone by 11 o'clock if that and the other really cute thing in the shops and this is a delight you see um, and I actually find this hugely emotional because I live in a place that's increasingly becoming a bit more transient Deniston is like the coolest place on the planet apparently despite my arrival here some years ago maybe that had something to do with it let's not I don't know it's not for me to say um, there's a lot of families here and a lot of generations um, so you see in the kind of that kind of open basket the bread kind of the bread stand in the shops um, I hadn't realised how common this was but it, it's a thing isn't it now that I think about it so you love your bread on one side you love your your bagged rolls your kind of prepackaged rolls if you like and then, so what happens is the rolls come into the shop. Fucking hell, sorry. This is my memories of 50 years. They come in, massive big, you know, kind of the big trays, the big wooden trays, which what we used to use is sleighs, sledges. When we were Wayne's, you'd nick one of them at the local shop. Well, they'd give you it, actually, because I never stole anything, Your Honour. Um, and then the, the, the shopkeeper would break them off into, like, sixes. So you get half a dozen, you get eight... And they'll go to plastic bags and they'll be like, but that's done in the shop. And you'd have a couple, uh, and then sometimes you see one, and you kind of think, that's me in my community, you know, that's, you know, Mr. Kenny, maybe from up the stair, when he was still alive, God rest his soul, he'd get one wee roll in the morning, you know? Um, anyway, I don't know why I'm telling you that, because that's not what the boy came back with, because there was none left. The boy came back with, a, I'm not going to mention the brand name, Hovis. It's Hovis Rolls. They were lovely. We flowery baps, I think, uh, is the only word. Baps is the only word we can use. So these lovely baps. He said, make this a 10 minute recording. That was never going to happen. <laughs> All right, you know me. I know you. We know why we're here and we're enjoying it. So look at these baps. And these, these baps, they fall in what I, I describe as the betwixt to between region. Two are not enough. Three might be a little too many. Um, but in the words of uh, the Deep Purple song, more than enough is never too much. And um, that's Ian Gillen on vocals there. I think it was um, Concerto for Group and Orchestra, written by John Lord, 1971. I think it could be earlier. Who knows? But I'm sure if you know, you'll tell me and do. So I had to, um, Nathan, you probably want three of these roles, and his response was. Well, if there's enough bacon. <laughs> so, and there was. We managed to get the bacon in. And I had, uh, and, and again, this is this is the great divide between. Now, to be honest, Nathan is an East Coaster, but he's for Fife, the Royal Kingdom thereof. And he's not for Edinburgh, but he's lived there for a long time. So I'm at him, what sauce do you want? Do you want sauce? And he goes, oh, and of course, he's, I can't do his voice very well. I'll learn for you. Um, but he said, what did you say when I said, would you take, would you want sauce? You said, can you remember? I usually take brown. That isn't what you said. That's, no, you just made that up now, and that's unnecessarily sexual. <laughs> I usually take brown. You said, I, I like other sauce. You said, do you remember that? <laughs> you said that, didn't you? And I've got some sriracha in the fridge, and the other thing you need to know is, um, I would say Nathan's current food obsession is Korean food. Yeah. Smashing it, kimchi. Absolutely delicious. Have a look at his, his pictures and stuff. Um, actually, we we'll, might post some of them up on on our our, our pages for this because they're such delicious things. Um, so I had a bit of sriracha. We're talking about sriracha anyway. I dish up the three uh, rolls. I've got red sauce. He was like, I, was, I do like a bit of brown. I'm like, enough of it. Enough of it, you and me. What about your rolls? I did a little flirt there with them. It was quite a successful little flirt. Um, we're sitting eating them and... There's a beautiful thing that I worry is getting lost in this modern world. And my worry may be misplaced. And I think today might show that it is misplaced. For those of you listening that have been in marriages or relationships for like decades, you know what I'm talking about. For those of you that are starting out in relationships, you know... It might be something you would do well to recognise, possibly. People worry about pan and panic about silence. 
Silence can be the most beautiful thing you experience. If it's a shared silence, if it's an owned silence. And actually me and Nathan, you know, we've known each other. Like, I've, you know, we met when you were 23 or something. So 10 years we've known each other. But really and truly, to say we were friends for 10 years isn't true. We were acquaintances that became really close friends in the, well, the last year. So to sit here, and he's not much older than my son, you know? So it's um, it's not kind of the coming together of two men of the same sort of age with shared life experiences. What's so exciting for me about people in Nathan's age is you see the potential, you see all that they can be, and he can be, you know, a lot. And we're sitting there, and there's a silence. And I just realised how beautiful to have this silence. A silence two men have tacitly, if you'll forgive the pun, signed up for and are comfortable with and are enjoying. And it was really was quite a profound moment just to know that you can enjoy the silence with someone, someone new in your life, someone, you know, important in your life. Because, again, even though I'm 52 and I'm a pretty good judge of character, you do get nervous. You don't, you know, you've got someone coming in doing all this lovely work, which I'm going to tell you about in a minute. Calm down, Nathan, I'll tell them. <laughs> we sat back and I looked at him and he looked at me and those, those sparkly alive eyes were still sparkling and still alive and I knew what he was thinking and I don't want to presume but I think he knew what I was thinking at that moment and we didn't need words I, I don't feel we needed words I felt it was all communicated just you know but we used words I said to him I said do you want another three rolls <laughs> and he looked at me and says do you want another three rolls now the minute somebody says do you want them means they fucking want them but they're too shy to say yes Am I right? I'm right. So, did we get another three rolls? No, we didn't. Because we felt it was important not to be fat bastards. What do you say, Nathan? You could have had another three rolls, though, couldn't you? I didn't Two? Want, I didn't want you to make me out to be the bad influence. <laughs> In the words of Billy Eilish, I'm the bad guy. Um, so, uh, and actually, genuinely, it was... Uh, a lovely moment of knowing exactly what each other was thinking about food. We've never had bacon rolls together before. However, that isn't the point. Or is it the point? That might well be the point of this podcast. This po- podcast is all about engaging. So, uh, food is? Love. Love is? Food. Food love is? Life. Exactly. That's what we've worked out in our short time making these. So, listen. We wanted to offer something slightly different. Because I, I think there's a lot of stuff out there that is food related but I wanted to offer and Nathan and I both wanted to offer something that was a little bit more wrap around I suppose is one way you might describe it so here's what we do it's a, it's a five day a week set up Mondays How Deep Is Your Love podcast where I'll be talking about a single subject each week um, the first one is chickpeas I'll be talking you through a few different recipes and the role chickpeas play in my cooking and my life and uh, different kind of cuisines around the world. Um, then for the Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, there'll be chickpea themed recipes uh, on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, Twitter. Um, and on Friday, the recipe we talked about uh, in the podcast on the Monday is the cook along recipe. So you sign up, we spend an hour together uh, cooking live together. Uh, the first recipe, which is going to be chickpea masala. Uh, I think that's what we're going to do. So um, that you're going to find on on Patreon. Now, there are also going to be in-person events. I mean, obviously, for me, catering is important. Just general cooking is important. I'm writing a few different books. There are lots of of things on offer. Um, I'm going to make sure that for me, it's hugely important that folk are getting really good value. But more important than that, for me, is connection. So every tier, we're often you has a good degree of connection between you and me. Because why else do it? You know, one thing lockdown taught me is how much I love people and how important people are to me. They're my lifeblood, you know. And so communicating with you, learning from you, sharing with you, just being with you... Um, is the very center of my existence. So we want to hear from you. Have a look at the uh, the events. Uh, have a look at the, the, the structures, the different levels on Patreon. Hopefully there'll be one that works for you. If there isn't, let us know. We'd, you know. we'd love to put something together for you 
we're here to learn. We're here to to fulfil your desires and expectations. Uh, but more than anything, I, I believe I believe in community. Um, I never thought I'd have my belief in community so tested as it has been in the last wee while. And I know just from posting pictures of food on Instagram, on Twitter, on Facebook, you know, all these different Twitter, all these different media, I know that my food and food generally makes people stop in their day, makes people want to respond, makes people feel the need to connect, to communicate, to be part of a community. To love food and to have food to love. Because food is. Love. And love is. Food. And food love is. Life. So live with me. Uh, I couldn't be more excited. It's lovely to be back broadcasting. Um, broadcasting directly to those um, I care about the most. And I don't use this word lightly. Um, I have a great deal of love for for you. A lot of you, you know who you are, have stood stood by, stood by me and stayed with me and engaged with me and encouraged me and been my friends. Although I've never met you, I've never spoken to you. You're my friends. You're my community. You're my people. So thank you for the bottom of my heart. Um, let's try and put the tough two years behind us and look forward. Um, and hopefully. You know, I think it was, it's not like me to quote Aristotle or Plato, um, but I think it was either Aristotle or Plato that said, I'm, I'm translating roughly from the original Greek, um, I think they said something like, I, I believe the children are our future, teach them well, let them lead the way. Um, no, that was Whitney Houston, wasn't it? It was Whitney Houston. But listen, um, how deep is your love? Uh, how deep was, is, and forever shall be your love. Thank you for listening and look forward to hearing from you soon. So email away. Love, love.